Clear statements in leadership. That should normally not be an issue nowadays times, but unfortunately, it became one more and more. I'm now going to present you someone you probably don't know, but especially at the moment where people tell me, and I received quite a number of emails, where people tell me it is quite difficult to make a political statement because we consider ourselves an unpolitical brand. So just to be very straightforward with that, when you say you are apolitical or unpolitical, that already is a political statement. And just to let you know, it's not a good one. When you do not participate in political discourse, you also have no claim in complaining about what comes out of it at the very end. If you don't go to vote, if you don't participate in the discourse, it simply means you don't care. And when you don't care, you have to live with every disadvantage that might come out of it at the very end. So when someone works in a corporate position, people often, often think, well, I should be careful on social media, maybe my employer doesn't like what I say. And when you are still in a situation where your leadership team corrects your private statements, that is not only unacceptable from a leadership point of view, it is also not very sustainable because we just recently received a, a statement from edX, which is a learning initiative from Harvard and the MIT, about the amount of people who at the moment think about getting a different job after crisis. Wait for that number. You better have some more sustainable leadership lined up quite soon. Talking about that young man, his name is Jay Mann. You find him, in link, you find him on LinkedIn. Jay Mann is a corporate portfolio management team leader at Barclay Card. Barclay Card, financial industry. Financial industry means rather conservative. Canary Wharf, you normally, when you enter Canary Wharf, think they all look the same. You normally have mostly male, white people, dark suits, white shirt, dark tie. And that's how they pretty much all look like until some people thought there might be a reason for a change. And Barclay Card was one of the first banks to do that with their diversity initiative. Many banks try to step into the diversity area. Needless to say, not many do very well, but Barclay Card does indeed. So when we now look at the statement of Jay Mann, it is of course important to know that this is a public statement. So it is not something which uh, you could have made up or something which is only available to a certain level of friends. It is available to each and every person. So when you go on, for example, Facebook, where I'm connected with him, then you will find the statement of Jay Mann straight on top of his profile. He made it public, which means his friends will read it, his family will read it, but also people he works with will read it. And it's quite interesting that someone at a young age, because Jay Mann is just in his mid-twenties, makes a very clear statement and very political. Also, when I shared that statement, made very clear that he would not even remotely consider to work for a company that is unable to deliver on that promise. So here's the statement. Jay Mann posting from June 14th at 9.46 p.m. For the avoidance of doubt or confusion, in case you find yourself unfriended, I will entirely disassociate myself from any friend or family member who shares a post slash conveys a view that is even remotely racist or transphobic, come to mention it. If your basic morals don't align with mine, I don't, any, I, don't, I don't want anything to do with you. If the Black Lives Matter movement is disturbing your sense of patriotism, then you've missed the point entirely. I implore you to look, I implore you to look beyond your own privilege and educate yourself. Use reliable internet sources or read books. There is no shame in being late to a party as long as you get there in the end. Period. That was not only widely shared, it was also a very clear statement, which not everyone will like, because the number of people who are now received emails from where they say our organization doesn't make a statement about racism or diversity, not making a statement already is a statement. And of course, you want to have the best talent, don't you? Because some people say, oh, polit politics is not relevant for me. You want to have the best talent. And when we talk to young people, they are very keen on working in diverse environments. So when you are, which some people say, a rather traditional business, that is just, let's face it, an excuse for not being diverse or not even trying to be. I'll just give you an example of how very clear statements help you. Maybe you saw that in the recent past, the Conservative Party in the UK, you may or may not support the Conservative Party politics apart. Um, they were doing quite well when it comes to the elections and Boris Johnson against Jeremy Corbyn of the leaders of, of the Labour Party won in a landslide win. Many seats, 
went to the Conservative Party, even breaking the red wall in North England, which, which rarely ever happened. Keir Starmer, who then followed Jeremy Corbyn, Jeremy Corbyn was not very successful with his leadership work. Keir Starmer made unambiguously clear what his point of, of, of view is. He made unambiguously clear, uh, without sitting on a fence, what his views are on Brexit, on the nation, on the economy, on social politics, etc., etc. And he was not, unlike Jeremy Corbyn, who said when he was going for the elections that they will decide later how they take a stand on Brexit. And you see, again, not having a stand is not really helpful. Keir Starmer made very clear where he is about Brexit and about other instances of politics. And he is now, and that is something which was reported by the LBC, a radio station leading Britain's conversation, Keir Starmer is now the most favorite, most famous opposition and most liked opposition leader since Tony Blair. And he's only in the office for a couple of months. Of course, people will now say, well, maybe the other side didn't do su such a great job. That's, that's unambiguously true. But still, it means when someone else is not doing a great job, it still means that you have to convince people that you are the better option. So when we talk about unambiguous statements and about how to position yourself as a leader, just one very important survey. edX, a learning platform, which is a corporation, of uh, the Harvard University and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, often abbreviated MIT, they did a survey about how do people think about their future at work and in education. So even in times of crisis, 56% are interested in pursuing additional education. And let's face it, when people pursue education, they do it because they think, where I am now, I don't want to be in the future, because often people want to develop their skills to go to a different position, to get to a different place in life. And often this happens by changing jobs, because let's face it, the real big salary jumps hardly ever happen when you stay inside the same organization. They often happen when you when you change jobs to a different organization. But the most important number here is 65%. 65% of all people they ask, and the survey of MIT and Harvard University done via edX, a platform where hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people learn from. It's a representative survey. 65% have realized they want to find a different job since working at home. You know what that means? That means people work from home and of course in the beginning it was a bit uncomfortable and we didn't really know how it works and of course the procedures weren't properly in place, especially when you weren't prepared very well and it was, let's say, a bit of a rough start. But then people get used to it and quite quickly, and 65%, let's say, so two-thirds say, I could live without seeing the office building ever again. So that means people think... What I did so far is not what I want to do in the future. I don't want to sit in a commute for an hour or an hour and a half. I don't want to go to an office building where I, I'm basically forced to like people who I do not like. And I also have to hang out in a, meetings which take forever. Many people say since they went online, it's way more on point. Meetings are shorter, more spot on. So you see that the situation at the moment is dramatically changing. And often, and of course now some people will think, oh, what is in for me here as a business owner? I know because I'm a business owner by myself. Let's face it, when we can do more work from remote locations, not only do we have access for, for more talent, way more talent, when we can hire them from all over the world, also we can save on rent or cost of ownership instead of having brick and mortar buildings where each and everyone has to turn up on time every morning. I mean, being on time, I'm still German, being on time is a good thing. Let's just don't get that wrong. It is a really good thing. Did I mention really good? Yes, because it is. So buildings where people have to turn up every morning again, this will not be the standard from now on. People who now went through university and had maybe a semester or maybe even two remotely, many said, well, I wasn't very comfortable in the first place, but I saw it is possible when it is done properly. Of course, people need to be properly trained to present online and have a proper education as an as a presenter because it's very different between standing in the room and presenting online. Still, it is very important that you have to see your leadership position must be a different one right now. So what does that mean for you? You have to make a very clear statement where you are at the moment and the statement must be unambiguously true. So when you, for example, say we are in a challenge situation but we see business picking up. Great. So 
Um, some people will now say, oh, maybe people will come up then and they want to have additional training and education and I don't want to invest in them. Look, when you honestly say, we just get out of crisis, no one will come around the corner and say, can you give me money for a training course? No one will say that. When you say we do reasonably well and people often see when they do reasonably well and they will talk to each other in the organization, by the way, they do it online or offline anyway, so they will get when, it's, when the company is doing well, then it is your job to educate your people. And there are two kinds of education you, you can give them. Uh, one is obligatory education. Let's say you work in banking and there's a new law in place that tells you you must have a training on money laundry or prevention of money laundry until the end of the year. Please don't tell your people, oh, we invested hundreds of thousands training our people. No, you didn't. You followed an obligatory rule. It's not an investment. You simply follow the rules. This is like telling your data protection team, oh, we invested so much in training you in GDPR and data protection. No, no, you didn't invest that. You had to do it. It was a legal obligation to follow it up and you trained them to do so. As soon as you offer a training course where people say this is helpful for work, but it's also helpful for my own skill set, then people will always be more thankful and they will be way more way more motivated and willing to stay with you for a longer time. By the way, if you still say, say I don't invest in training, coaching, whatever it is, um, by standard, in, be in the best case scenario, one out of four in your organization are already looking for a different job and maybe just don't find that right at the moment, but they will either leave your job as soon as possible or they already mentally have given up and they only show up do the standard work they are not engaged they don't even care about your organization they only show up because bills need to be paid and that is a very low level of productivity so making this very clear statement step one make a clear statement where we are step two tell people what is it about the future so give them an out view an outlook for the next three six nine months and then step three tell them what is the conclusion from that and when you when you have to make cuts these cuts must be in proportion for each and every one so it is for example not possible and that's an example which i received via email by the way if you want to have topics on this podcast i of course guarantee you complete confidentiality just drop me an email nb at nb-networks.com and your topic will be on this podcast quite soon um, people saw when cuts happen people who formerly uh, made four thousand a month now they make three thousand so that's one one quarter less People who made 100,000 before now make 95,000. So that's 5% less. People, of course, will question these moves. And they have every right to do so. And by the way, now some people will say, oh, another leftist telling me how the world works. Politically, I'm in between the liberal and conservative spectrum. Liberal in German way, the FDP, the liberals there. My circle of friends, and especially people who are left-wing, frequently call me neoliberal and the typical entrepreneur thinking of the own advantage, which in my opinion is not true. But look, we, ha we need a different approach. Instead of telling people, this is work, this is how it is, I make the decision and you have to follow. We have to show people why we do and make these decisions. We cannot cut 5% on the top level and 25% on the lower level and still say, oh, look, but it's 5,000 there and it's just 1,000 with you. Proportion is relevant. And it's quite shocking that I have to mention that. And just to give you some final words about relations at the moment and proportion. When we had all, all the protests going on, for example, in central London, suddenly a whole group of, of people became silent because a young woman held up a sign. And this sign said, why is ending racism a debate? Yeah, I felt exactly like you do right now. Do you have an answer? Because I don't. I honestly don't. Why do we as leaders still stand there, make either ambiguous statements or no statements at all, while it is blindingly obvious which way is the right way to go? Why do we still have brands who say, oh, we don't make a political statement because we don't want to make a political position, when each and everyone knows the only thing you want to do is pleasing a questionable audience for financial gain, because that's what you do. And that's from someone who is rather conservative in his political views. So it is our call now to make an unambiguously clear statement where we are, what we do, and what the outlook is. I wish you all the best implementing this. Thank you very much for your time.